Hey everybody, I'm Tony Pujols. I'm a software engineer and developer advocate at Google Cloud. One thing I hear a lot from other developers is that just getting started on the cloud can be, quite frankly, a bit daunting. They prefer to focus on building their applications than on managing infrastructure operations. So that's why I'm excited to share this video with you today. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you, or at least give you a taste of how far we've come and being able to accelerate the developer experience. I'm gonna show you how to deploy a web app and even debug it while it's running on Google Cloud. And I'm gonna do it from within a popular integrated development environment, Visual Studio Code. With only a few clicks, we're gonna take advantage of autopilot mode to, to create a Google Kubernetes Engine cluster for hosting our application, and then we're gonna deploy our app to it. We're gonna be able to monitor that deployment and view application logs, and even stop on breakpoints in the editor if we need to debug the app while it's running. Let's check it out. So here I am in Visual Studio Code, and I've got our web app up here. I'm going to go to the Cloud Code extension for Kubernetes, and what I want to do is click on this plus right here and create a new cluster on Google Kubernetes Engine. This will take a second, um, create a new cluster. I want an autopilot cluster. It's going to bring up this form. And I can tell you right now that the defaults are going to be just fine. Autopilot cluster one in US central one public cluster. That's what I want. I'm going to create it. I can go back to the IDE now and um, just let it watch for me. And there it is. It's provisioning. So. Um, this is going to take at least five minutes, if, if not more. So go get a cup of coffee. What's happening here is that Google is your SRE. It's going to go ahead and set up this cluster for you um, according to best practices, security best practices to protect your cluster against various threats and for high availability, um, setting it up in multiple zones uh, within the region, um, three or, or four zones, as the case may be for the region. And, and so this is going to take... Um, at least five minutes. So I'm going to hit pause and come back in five minutes and get some coffee. Cheers. And here we are. We've got our cluster now. There's nothing deployed to it yet, but let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're going to run our app on um, our new cluster. Actually, I'll just go straight to debugging the app. Either way, it's going to need to build and then deploy it. I'll click this and we are going to get presented with this form here for configuring our build environment. We want to build remotely. We'll take advantage of cloud build. We will store the image that's going to deploy, be used to deploy our web app in a container on GKE. We'll store that in a GCR, a Google Container Registry, um, a registry associated with our project. And this was intelligent enough to analyze our project and see that our web app had a Docker file associated with it already. Um, it's going to use a Docker builder and um, all these defaults are good. Um, you, you, you can consider unchecking this if you don't want the application to be uh, deleted after you are done debugging, but um, I'll leave it checked. I'm going to click debug and this is going to go ahead and start up. And this will go pretty quick. It's going to package this up, send it over to Cloud Build. Cloud Build is going to build our image, and it's already done. And now it's deploying to the cluster. This will take maybe a minute. I'll, uh, I'll pause here and, and wait a bit. And it's done. Um, our application is actually now sending logs that we are streaming here and viewing inside of our IDE. Uh, of course, this this is a server telling us that it's listening on port 8080. That address doesn't do us any good. That's inside the container, inside the pod, inside the cluster on Google Cloud. Um, we're being asked here to confirm um, the the code for the app in the container is in the slash app directory. And I'll hit enter and confirm that that allows source mapping to be configured between our IDE and the, uh, and the code that's running online. So, um, well, let's go ahead and check out our app. 
I will set a breakpoint in just a moment, but let me tell you how we access the app. There's there's two ways. There is the public IP, um, and you can get that by drilling down here under uh, the cluster information, looking at services, going to web external, and finding the external IP, and that will work. There's the app. Uh, but we can also take advantage of the fact that it is all, uh, is done port forwarding for us. It allows us to use our local host with a port that's on our system, so that we can tunnel into the um, tunnel into this service inside the cluster. Uh, for one thing, you might not have set up a load balancer. You might not have uh, public access through that. This port forwarding will let you get in there and will allow you to de to debug. So um, I'll just open up the uh, the web page using this, and I will set my state and my county. And I guess before I vote, let me go ahead and set a breakpoint. And let's vote for Daffy Duck. And there you go. Breakpoint got hit. I can um, I can now take a look at what's going on inside of my my vote route handler. I'll just step over all of these, and I can see uh, the information that got posted from the form. Let's see, Bodie for Daffy, California, Fresno. Yep, there you go. This is working. I'll just go ahead and finish running. Really nothing to debug. Daffy won, and we're done. Uh, if, if you're done with the debugging session, just go ahead and click up here to disconnect. And if you want to shut it down, then you click this icon right there. That's it. This is amazing. And the best part about this experience in my mind is that it brings everything into, it, it co-locates all of your concerns inside of your development environment and puts it next to the code. Um, I didn't have to drop into a command line. I didn't have to um, do a lot of work inside of the, uh, the the web console. I was able to be inside of this IDE, inside of Visual Studio Code. And by the way, I'm, I'm inside of uh, Visual Studio Code, and I'm able to do the things that I want to do, which is create a cluster, thanks to Autopilot, that was super easy, and deploy my application. All that inside of this environment in this environment, um, Cloud Code also runs with another popular IDE. It runs with JetBrains, and it's also automatically installed as part of the uh, Cloud Shell editor, too, if you want that web browser experience while you're developing uh, for Google Cloud. So I'm excited by this experience. One of the key benefits is that with autopilot mode, you can let Google do your SRE work for you by managing not only the control plane of the Kubernetes cluster, but the work the worker knows as well. Um, now we're trying to figure out what to provision for your workloads. You're automatically optimized for production with a stronger security posture from the get-go. And I didn't mention this yet, but with autopilot mode, you don't pay for nodes. So no more paying for unused capacity. You only pay for the pods that you use. And finally, although we only scratched the surface, we we showed how advancements with tooling dramatically accelerate your ability to be up and running in the cloud, freeing you to focus on building more application features. Hope to catch you next time. Cheers.